Today, I want to talk about ecosystems. I've got two right here, the Apple and the Google ecosystem. And these, I think, are really, really interesting comparisons because you hear a lot of people talking about the Apple ecosystem and how carefully designed it has been to get you to buy as many products as possible. But there's not a ton of people out there that subscribe to the Google ecosystem. So why do we not think of this collection of products as tightly integrated, whereas we think of these as being unusable without each other? Maybe not quite that far, but today we're talking about ecosystems. What makes one ecosystem work and another one not work? So make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, the number one tool for building your beautiful online presence. So to start things off, we first have to define what makes a product family an ecosystem, because it's easy to look at all of this stuff and think, okay, well, this is just a collection of future e-waste. We have some wearables, we have some audio equipment over here on both tables. We've got some cell phones and some laptops and there's a tablet over here. You can kind of mix and match any of these products and be totally fine. But the way these manufacturers want you to behave is to, for example, start with a phone and say, okay, well, now that I've got one of these, I do want some wireless headphones and they might as well be the same manufacturer so that they can be embedded and have some extra bonus features. So I'll pick up some AirPods. And now that I've got these two, it sure would be nice if I could control my AirPods as well as track activity on my wrist. Oh, wow, perfect. We've got an Apple Watch. And now if I've got all of those, well, I might as well grab a MacBook because now iCloud syncs devices across all of those. But it's not just Apple. See, Google has that too. Well, if I'm gonna be buying into the Google version of how Android should work, I might as well get the Google version of how wireless earbuds should work. And I might as well get the Google version of how a smartwatch should work. And the Google version of how a laptop should work. So what makes these two ecosystems any different? On the face of it, they look exactly the same. You've got a single large manufacturer that is controlling the hardware and the software across multiple devices and device categories. They seem to be exactly the same, but it doesn't take more than a quick YouTube search to unearth some pretty clear differences. The first page of results for Apple ecosystem as a search term are filled with a ton of videos with very high view counts. But if you do the same for the Google ecosystem, you'll find very few videos and view counts that reveal a lot less interest. So it seems clear that whatever Apple is doing with their ecosystem, it is having a larger effect on people than what Google is doing. But why? I would put the rough start date for the Apple ecosystem as a concept around the early 2010s. This is when demand was shifting from the iPod to the iPhone, we had the introduction of the iPad, and the Mac was becoming more widespread. It was less focused on the high-end pro segment and was becoming very widely popular. The early 2010s also had a bunch of precedent set up for things that would later become part of the Apple ecosystem. There was the iPod Nano that was frequently worn as a watch. There was the acquisition of Beats, which eventually led to Apple focusing heavily on audio. And by the time you get around to 2015, 2016, 2017, the Apple ecosystem was in full swing with HomePods, AirPods, cases, Apple Watches, and watch bands. The list goes on and on and on. If you look at the Google side of things though, well, it's definitely a different picture. Google got their start in the hardware business with the Nexus phones, as well as the original Chromebook Pixel back in 2012. And those are arguably similar to what we have now, but the road has been way less linear and a lot more bumpy. When you look at Apple products, they get introduced and then they get iterated on for the most part. The same is not true 
with Google. So Apple definitely has the bigger ecosystem, but do you know what would make it even better? A 15 inch MacBook Air. And that's why I've been working with today's video sponsor, Squarespace, to build this website meant to convince Apple that we need this thing now. Squarespace templates make it super easy to put together a beautiful website and you can change everything from the color scheme to the elements, to the layouts of pages, and even adding a simple online store to sell some merchandise to convince you guys that 15 inches is just right. What's more, Squarespace makes it super easy to keep in touch with my loyal 15 inch MacBook Air fans by both email campaigns and member areas. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. And on top of all of that, Squarespace is crushing it with their analytics and SEO tools to make sure that your website is found. Check out squarespace.com to get started with a free trial. And when you're ready to publish your website, go to squarespace.com slash Luke Miani to get 10% off your first order of a website or domain. And now let's get back into the ecosystems. But it's not just in the comparatively sparse hardware that Google offers that we find weakness in this ecosystem. It's in Google itself. See, the problem with Google is that they simply just don't have the courage in their convictions to stand by their products. And I'm not just talking about the fact that Pixel phones get three years of software updates, whereas iPhones get seven. I'm talking about the fact that Google now has a reputation for flat out abandoning their products and just shutting them down. I mean, look at Stadia. That was the big talk recently. Google introduced Stadia and then basically let it flounder and then killed it. And they just said, all right, never mind. We're not, we're done with that now. And Stadia is far from the only time that Google has done that. I mean, there's quite a laundry list. Remember Google Glass? That bit the dust a long time ago. And if we're gonna talk about Chromebooks, well, Google's current only Chromebook is a far cry from all of the other ones that they have also abandoned. The Chromebook Pixel similarly died after just one mid-cycle refresh and was then completely scrapped and reinvented as the Pixel Book, which was a foldable. Then that one was scrapped and reinvented as the Pixelbook Go, which sort of implies a sub-tier with a higher Pixelbook above it, but right now there isn't because they haven't done anything with this in more than two years. Would you buy one of these right now? I wouldn't. There's no indication that this is going to be updated, replaced, or just killed altogether. So why would you take the gamble and spend 600 bucks on one of these things? Google even tried to launch an iPad competitor nearly four years ago, and they failed so catastrophically that they never even sent one to me. Yeah, I haven't talked about this on the channel because I had like 40,000 subscribers at the time, but right after Google started sending me stuff in the form of the Pixels, they announced the Pixel Slate. It was supposed to be a sort of Chromebook iPad hybrid. And I got an email from the PR team asking if I wanted to review one. And I said, of course. Everything seemed pretty legit and thought out. They even started this hashtag Pixel Slate community in the likes of hashtag Team Pixel, which they also started in 2018. But things very quickly started going downhill. Just two weeks later, I got this update email telling me that they are delaying shipment for my VIP kit. At this point, reviews of the Pixel Slate were coming out and they weren't very favorable. I mean, they weren't saying that the device was straight garbage, but they were saying that it needed a lot of work. However, once January came around, I got another update from the Pixel Slate representative saying that they were again going to be delaying shipment, this time until the end of March. Mind you, that's a full five months after that initial email. And by the time March came around, having not heard anything at all, I asked, hey, do you have an update on when the Pixel Slate will arrive? Is it coming in March? To which they responded, we understand you're excited to check out the Pixel Slate, but we don't have any further updates on delivery. In the meantime, would you be interested in a Google Pixel Book instead? They never sent me the Pixel Slate. It just ceased to exist. I never heard from them again. I did get sent the Pixel Book and I made a video on it 
even though it was already two years old at that point and itself would later be discontinued. So as a purchaser, why would I have any confidence in really any of these lineups? With this reputation of releasing products that cost several hundred dollars and then just abandoning them? The Pixel Slate only lasted a year before they just quietly removed it from the Google store. So why would I as a consumer spend hundreds of dollars on a product that's just going to be completely abandoned? A lot of people make fun of Apple for not changing their products that much from year to year, but at least they stand by them. They iterate and they have a predictable and regular schedule for making changes. Google tends to just wildly bounce around from entirely new categories to then killing them and bringing in something completely different. I mean, the predecessor to this traditional 16 by nine laptop was a three by two foldable. They're completely different products. The same even goes within the Google Pixel lineup. This thing had that Google Sole motion sensor gesture chip, remember that? They killed that immediately. That was only on one phone for one year. Like, why would I get invested in a feature that only makes it for one cycle and then now this phone is gonna get dropped from support and I guess all of that was for nothing. It just, it just doesn't inspire confidence and that's what makes the Apple ecosystem so much better. I think a lot of people assume that you buy an ecosystem all at once, but you don't. The thing that makes the Apple ecosystem work is that all of these categories continue to be there. If I buy an Apple Watch in 2019, an iPhone in 2021, a laptop in 2022, and then go back around and buy another Apple Watch in 2022, I at least have the confidence that that product category, as it was then, is gonna still be around but you could buy into a device in 2019 in Google land and that whole entire type of thing isn't even on the market anymore by the time you're ready to get something else. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro are selling really, really well this year when they barely look any different from last year. This is a stable and incremental upgrade. People are seeing this and saying, okay, they've got a rhythm going. They've been making these Pixel phones for a couple of years. They've stopped like introducing little gimmicky things and then killing them immediately. Now we finally have some amount of stability. That's why these phones are starting to work now. That's why the Pixel 7 Pro seems to be selling better than the 6 Pro, even though they look basically the same. Google could easily build a comparable ecosystem to Apple. In fact, I haven't really talked about that many of the features because when you really get down to it, there's not a ton of difference in what each of these ecosystems is capable of doing. You can point out things that Google does that Apple can't and vice versa. But the thing that holds Google back is not the features, it's not the software. It's that they just can't get their act together. I hope that the Pixel 7 Pro is proof that they can change their ways and make it work. But until then, that is why the Apple ecosystem is just better. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. And as usual, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.